Good morning. Welcome to the German-Austrian border. As you can see, we are in an incredible environment to film an incredible car. We're on set shooting the all-new Aston Martin DBS. However, this video is under embargo until the 1st of August, so be sure to keep a lookout for when that thing goes live. Today, however, we are answering your questions. I put out a Q&A post on Instagram. As always, you guys have inundated us with fantastic questions. We've picked out some of the best, and we're gonna be splicing in a Q&A between filming this car. Let's hit it. Okay, so we're just leaving the drive of the fabulous Kempinski Hotel. Uh, funnily enough, I actually got invited to the opening of this hotel a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Uh, it turns out that was a tragedy, because it's incredible. Anyway, George is gonna read out the questions that he has picked, so I have no idea what he's about to say, but we'll read out the name of the guy or gal on Instagram, and then uh, we shall answer your question in real time. So, first question by Stenhouse J. When are you going to get a classic car? <laughs> Do you classic Carrera GT as a classic? <laughs> I, I, I think I would, yeah. <laughs> classic car. Um, do you know what's quite cool? After being on the Milla Milia with Alfa Romeo earlier this year, I was driving a 1954 Alfa Romeo 1900 Sport Spider. Uh, it had no roof at all. The windscreen was a piece of plexiglass about that big. Uh, and I was getting hit in the face with bugs. When you filled it up with fuel, they drilled holes in the uh, footwell so excess lubrications and oil would drip out of the footwell and you came out just generally smelling of octane. And while that might sound a chore, actually at that time, there was nowhere else I'd rather be. And since then, more than anything, I've probably had the bug for a classic car. However, I'm not sure I'm quite ready to own one yet. I'm definitely interested in spending more time in them and then basically trying to find out which classic car would be right for me. The only thing that I would class right now as a classic, and it's definitely a modern day classic, is the Carrera GT. That'll happen one day, not anytime soon, because I've just whacked a load of money into an F12 TDF, but when the right one comes at the right time, it'll happen. We're at the bottom of our toll road where we're going to begin filming this glorious vehicle. Aston have already very kindly bought us our toll ticket passes to get up here, but there is some what of a queue, so we're waiting for those guys to, to deplete before we head on up, which is a perfect time for the next question, George. What's next? So, the next question by Ryan K underscore 96. If you could own one car from only one decade, which would it be? Oh, man. Because you've got to think. You got McLaren the F1 GTR. For, the 95. For, 1995 McLaren F1 GTR. Yeah. Long tail or just normal? Just normal. Not the long tail. I'd like to take it on the road. And the long tails, as the name would suggest, quite long. In fact, the long tails were genuinely long. To, like, they were big cars. So definitely McLaren F1 GTR. We've made it halfway up the toll road. We've been doing some filming. I've done my piece to camera. Very excited to share this with you in a few days' time. I was almost going to tell you how it drove then, but the <laughs> I'm simply not allowed to. So, we thought we'd stop here at this picnic spot with this amazing view and answer the next question. So, the next question is from Johnny underscore P underscore CLS. So, do you ever wake up and think, is this actually my life? Uh, what is going on? <laughs> Uh, recently on your video, Bruno Senna just pops up and says hi at the top of the Festival of Speed Hill. Random. Uh, is this now the norm? Flying uh, Friends LFA from Dubai? <laughs> I love it. Huge fan for a long time. Keep it going. <laughs> I mean, dude. Look at what... I mean, yeah, let's take a look around. This is what's happening behind us. Uh, to be honest, I do... I do... Every morning, I sort of wake up and check myself. Like, there's no room for becoming complacent in this environment. It's just, Every day is so incredible. Uh, but what I do find because I live the day and then I go back and edit it. I almost live the day twice and sometimes when I'm in the actual moment, what is a shame is sometimes I don't have 
the time to take it all in because I'm trying to focus so much on capturing it to share with you guys. It's not until I get back and sit in front of the laptop screen to edit it that you sort of relive that day and you bring up some scenes and you're like, wow, that actually happened. There are moments where sometimes you do need to step back and appreciate what's going on. Uh, but thankfully I get to relive it through the edit and share it with you guys. And I think what else really puts it into context is when I see your comments, it really just clarifies like how abstract and wild some of the things I end up doing are. It's, uh, it's truly incredible. And we're back. So the Kempinski, this is actually the Kempinski in the Bavarian Alps. And as a result, we have a view like this, which we've been driving this incredible vehicle around all day. I cannot wait to share this video with you. Literally every time George puts the camera in front of my face, I want to tell you things, great things about this car. But as I mentioned at the beginning, driving impressions are embargoed. So instead, we're going to go to the next question. Fire away, George. So a question from Wolford underscore 381. Updates on the 812. <laughs> um, Ah oh, man, so since the TDFs arrived, there's been quite a lot of questions saying what's happening with the 812? Uh, is, it, is it still coming? Will the TDF stay when the 812 turns up? Um, yes and yes. We're planning on still receiving the 812 super fast. Um, it's still a 2019 build slot, so we've still got some time yet. Um, but I'm super impressed with that car. And the TDF for me is going to be one of those you know, special cars that I try and cherish for a long time. Uh, even though I'm going to use it a lot, I'm still definitely uh, going to try and keep the sort of boring miles off it. And I think the 812 will just be one of the most incredible cars to use on a more regular basis. We're gonna try and take both and see how it goes, but very exciting. The next question, I'm not going to even try and butcher the pronunciation of this man's Instagram handle. <laughs> okay. um, but the question goes along the lines of, if Lamborghinis had dual clutch gearboxes like PDK, would you be a Lambo man or a Ferrari man? Wow, that's huge. Okay, if they had if they had twin clutch boxes and they dialed out the understeer, I'd, I'd be a both man. It's the ergonomics of them. I, so I find that the the best car they make personally right now is definitely the Huracan Performante. Fantastic gearbox, proper handling, sticky tires, uh, but still there's often a sort of, um, I guess, ergonomic compromise. You'll notice that the rake of the A-pillar on both an Aventador and a Huracan is really steep, which makes it aesthetically look fantastic and sleek, and it has a really thin window line. But when you're in them, they're quite cramped and the front of the window sits quite low and on an Aventador where the A-pillar meets the front wing there's a massive blind spot that you're sort of constantly ducking left and right of to see around. So they look fantastic and they sound fantastic but coming from the driver's side like I get much more enjoyment out of driving cars and I think if they sorted the ergonomics out a bit more slapped in a twin clutch gearbox and made the front ends as planted as the Performante because that is a really properly sorted car. In fact, if the DNA continues on from the Performante, they continue making cars like that, then I would definitely consider one in, in future. Speaking of things that look great, <laughs> uh, we're conveniently next to a white DBS. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking this up. This is no ordinary white. The fleck in the sunshine on this, it pops so hard. I had only ever seen one in a sort of satin gray. And while it looked menacing, the darker colors seem to hide all of the sculpture and that massive grill to a degree. In white, because it's so contrasting, this is one of my favorite colors. It suits it so well and accentuates all of that incredible Zagato-esque flair on, on the front. It's really sweet. So because I've been traveling and driving all day, I haven't really had time to read through all of your 
450 comments. Thank you so much to everybody. Unfortunately, we can't answer them all. Um, but I've come across one which is quite interesting, and I think it, it is interesting to answer. Uh, this is from Masor and Borchers. How do you keep your marriage working with all the traveling and working on projects? Sometimes it seems as if you are never at home. We know your wife is a major petrol head like you, but being apart so often has to have an impact. Or does she travel with you? He kind of answered it at the end there. <laughs> um, most of the time she's pretty much always here, but off camera. So she takes care of all of the logistics, all of the work that we do with brands, uh, appointments, everything that basically puts me in the right place at the right time, she manages everything. So uh, yeah, she's actually an invaluable part of this team. So actually a big thank you to her because a lot of what we end up doing and sharing with you guys is often orchestrated by her. So she's behind the scenes all the time. We travel together almost always. Uh, and so yeah, you're absolutely right. If we didn't, we wouldn't have a marriage. <laughs> This is the format with car launches, they're super quick in and out. We flew into Munich last night and we're driving out of Austria into Germany all the way back to Munich now to get on a plane to go back home for our next project which we'll share with you in a few days. But uh, George is digging out another question which I think is our penultimate question before we reach the airport. So the question, I can't remember the name of the gentleman that submitted it all lady. Um, <laughs> because I'm very tired at this point in time. Um, the question is, outside of YouTube, do you have like another job going on or kind of did work kind of stop when YouTube finished, uh, started even? The, the business side of things, yes, the business that uh, I was involved in before I got thoroughly involved in YouTube is still very much there, although now there is a fabulous team in place who are pretty much running things for me. Uh, I'm not involved on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do check in every now and again just to make sure that I'm burning the building to the floor. Uh, but if anything, since YouTube, I think I'm probably involved in more businesses than ever. Um, so there's YouTube itself. Um, off the back of that, I've been asked to present quite a lot of things. So I've got this presenting role happening now. Uh, I presented the launch of the new Aston Martin Vantage last year. Uh, McLaren asked me to present the launch of the McLaren Senna GTR at Geneva this year. And I was honored a few weeks ago to uh, launch the new McLaren 600 LT. So there's that line of work. Um, I also have now become a brand ambassador. So I'm an ambassador for Michelin, uh, which is keeping me very busy behind the scenes. You'll see a new TV show launching uh, for Michelin soon. Um, and there's also another project which I'm working on. I can't tell you too much about it right now, but it will be of great interest to all of you guys because it does involve cars. That's all I can say. <laughs> but uh, I would say in terms of monumental things, it is huge. And if uh, you were following my Instagram account a few weeks ago, I did put up that there are three big things coming this year, one of them being uh, the F12 TDF, another one is this venture which is happening, and the third one will unfold in due time. Also, Mr. JEWW in itself has inadvertently become a brand, and uh, off the back of the website we've got merchandise and things like that, so there's many fingers in many pies, the cogs are turning, and um, you'll see soon that we're just getting started. As the B-roll would suggest, we have arrived at Munich Airport. Believe it or not, I travel through here quite a lot every single year. Favorite place to come and eat is Selman's beautiful oriental restaurant they do a great beef and black bean sauce so if you're ever in munich airport and you're delayed like we are half an hour thanks lufthansa then stop by here and get yourself some beef and black bean sauce it's wicked anyway uh quite enjoying this q a format it gets us to be able to vlog you through our day but also provide a bit of uh, insight and value and i don't know what question george is going to pull out of the hat next so what's what so the final question of this trip when will there be a new episode in the podcast? If you're a really early subscriber, you'll remember that I did one episode 
of a series which I have appropriately titled Full Chat. <laughs> so the idea was that I was going to drive interesting people around in my car and sort of basically do an interview slash podcast and then pull the audio off and create it into a podcast. But because at the time I was starting out and I at that time owned the 675LT and I didn't realize how loud it was inside there because there was no sound deadening, uh, the audio part just kind of fell apart and I've decided to relaunch it. Now it's coming soon, funnily enough, as part of that other project which I told you about that I couldn't tell you about earlier on in the van back there. Um, as part of that, there is a official proper Mr. JWW, it might be called Full Chat Podcast coming soon. Now actually this is a great opportunity to ask you guys, when the podcast comes back, um, I guess what kind of format would you like it to be in? But more importantly, who would you like to see on it? Who would you like to see us interviewing, collaborating with, chatting with, uh, finding out the life stories of? Comments below. This one for me is really important and I'd love to get your feedback. So let us know what you think. The podcast is coming back. Thanks for asking. Anyway, despite the fact that we have a good hour left yet before we can board our plane, uh, I'm going to catch up on some uh, much needed emails and admin and uh, we're going to prep ourselves for the next journey ahead. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao. Walk by.